Well, here goes nothing. Uh, this is hopefully what's going to be a fairly quick tutorial on how to make a mod for Mind Test. Um, I'm going to cover uh, making a GitHub account, uh, syncing that to your local desktop or laptop computer, uh, making the mod, uh, testing it, and then pushing it up to GitHub. Uh, I'll cover a little bit of the uh, source code revision uh, control tool called Git, and uh, yeah, hopefully that will put you uh, on your way. So, first off, I'm going to close this because I'm not actually going to be working inside Mind Test at all, uh, not for not for right now. Uh, I've got a GitHub account, I've got quite a few repositories on the go already. Uh, your screen, depending on how much uh, you have used Git before, may be empty, may have your own repositories. Um, but the first thing we want to do is create a new repository. A repository, I guess you can say it's a project, it's uh, one single self-contained item. In this case it's going to be one particular mod, uh, our test mod. So I'm going to create a new repository and I'm going to give it a name. Um, uh, I'm going to call it Silly Mod because it's going to be Silly, uh, silly Demonstration Mod. Uh, I'm going to leave it public. Uh, I'm not going to initialize it with anything uh, quite yet. Um, I take that back. I'm going to initialize it with a readme. I'm not going to add a git ignore. I'll add that one uh, later and I'm going to choose a license that suits me. Um, I am going to license for now under whoop, the new lesser general public license version 3. Uh, that's pretty much uh, the one that's most similar to uh, the mind test license which is version 2.1. Version 3 however is a bit clearer a uh, bit finer cut when where the legal terms come into play, so I choose three. You can choose the license you wish. Uh, I recommend you have a good thought about what each of them are so that you know. If in doubt, try the lesser general public license two or three. Create. And we have a GitHub repository right here. It has a license file. Uh, if I look inside the license file, I can see it's the legalese text of the new general, lesser general public license version 3. And my readme is literally that readme. I could edit it right here. Uh, it's all done in markdown, so a single hash means um, a header. Silly mod. Uh, silly mod for mind test. And then I could do a lot of editing just straight uh, in the GitHub interface. I could do a studies demonstration mod uh, for video demo purposes. Full stop. At the bottom, we're making a change here. So at the bottom, we're asked, well, what kind of change have you actually done? So I updated description. Uh, that title should be short, just be very to the point about what you did, and you can put the details in here. Fleshed out whoop, the description. Description. Can I type properly this morning? Description a uh, little better. And I can create, uh, I can commit to the master branch or I can make a new branch. We'll get to that in a sec. Right now I'm just going to commit to the master branch. The master branch is the main branch. You'll hear developers talking about uh, committing on master, deploying master. Um, that's basically, it's sort of the, this is the branch that is the public facing one. So I'm going to commit. And now my readme has updated. Uh, I've got a little longer text. If I come back to the repository itself, it's updated on the front page. And it carries uh, my little description here. If I click on that description text, I can see the changes that were made. Now uh, this is uh, 
one of the main reasons people like revision control is that you can see how a document changed over time, what was added, what was removed, what was slightly modified. But it's all fine and well doing that um, on GitHub itself. It's generally more useful to do it on your own laptop or desktop. Uh, I use uh, Linux, uh, but pretty much everything that I'm going to show you uh, is pretty much the same under Mac, under Windows as well. Uh, to get the Git tool, if you're on Windows, you'll want to download it. Uh, on Mac, you probably will as well, although I think Mac these days uh, ships with Git automatically. But you can have it for, for all various platforms. And if you're on Linux, all you need to do uh, for Ubuntu users is apt get uh, oops apt get sudo apt get update update your um, your application sources list just make sure that it's all up to date and then apt whoop, get sudo to be able to do it as an administrator apt get install git and that's all I already have it so it's already going to tell me yeah git is already the newest version uh, and that's fine so Next thing I'm going to do mm -hmm. open that. I'm going to go to my Git projects. There we go. Mm, actually, no. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my mine test folder. Um, depending on where your mine test lives, you'll have to hunt around for it. Uh, on Linux, uh, it's one of the hidden folders. So you go to View, Show Hidden Files, and all these folders with dots in front of them are going to start appearing. You're looking for the mind test one. There's your mind test directories. You want to go into mods, and I'm going to create a new mod. Or rather, no, I'm not going to create one. I'm going to use the one that we already have. On the command line, and this will be true in Windows and in Mac. Uh, when you download for Windows, you're going to get a tool called Git Bash. Uh, open Git Bash, and then if you do something like ls, you can see the contents of the current directory you're in. That should be uh, your home folder's contents. Uh, for Linux, I'm going to go into Mind Test mods on Windows you'll have to locate your mind test folder on Mac it's going to be something like uh, tilde library application application backslash space you'll need that or maybe don't include the tilde just double code after the tilde um, application support, don't need the backslash if we're using double quotes. Um, and I think directly mind test, something like that. I'm on Linux, this is not going to work, but on a Mac, that's probably where you'd want to be. And in here I have all my mods again, these are all various mod folders. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone my Git repository. I'm going to take the URL that's at the top, cut, go back to my terminal, and then git clone. I'm going to paste this in. If I do control shift V to paste, I get what was in the clipboard. Control V is actually a control um, a sort of command that you can send to the terminal. Uh, so that won't work for pasting. You'll need to do control shift V. Control V, otherwise, is paste in any other uh, application. And hit return. Cloning into silly mod, it, clo it uh, downloaded everything from GitHub. Now, if I list 
uh, the contents, I should have my city mod somewhere around here. Yes, there it is. So now I can do CD silly mod and I'm in that folder. If I list the contents of my silly mod folder, I have again my license file, my readme file. And we're ready to start editing text. So if I come back to that folder I had, uh, I should have a silly mod in here somewhere. There we go. License file, readme file, a hidden .kit folder. Remember, I'm showing my hidden files. Otherwise, I don't see. I I, I shouldn't see it. If I do LSA, I can see all the all the files. And we're going to start to edit Lua files, we're going to start to edit code files, and for that we need a proper text editor. Uh, if you're on a Linux, Mac, Windows, you could use Genie, uh, the same for everyone, and you'd be able to follow on pretty much in the same interface as me, but that's not uh, quite so necessary. Uh, for Mac users, Text Wrangler uh, tends to be pretty good. Uh, it does code highlighting, which will be important as we'll see soon. Uh, for Windows users, Notepad++, uh, generally most uh, most support technicians, engineers, system administrators will use Notepad++. Uh, the standard Notepad in Windows is rubbish. I don't even know why they keep on bundling it. Uh, it serves its purpose from time to time when there's really nothing else but you want something proper. Notepad++ is a good option. So to start off with, I'm going to start editing things in Genie. I'll open with Genie. And this again is the readme file. You can see that there's uh, the title that we had earlier on, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to capitalize this S. I'm going to save, and that counts really as a change uh, to the file. I've made it a very small change, but it is a change nonetheless. Now here's where we're going to really start using Git. I want to see, so I can list my, my files and I can see I've still got a license file, I've still got a readme file, I don't really know what's changed. I can do git status and it will tell me that readme has been modified. Aha. Uh -huh. I can do git diff readme.md and it shows me that little minus in red text, uh, silly mod was removed, that line, and this line was added. Ah, uh, what's different? Oh, it's that S capitalization. So yeah, we want uh, we want that change to to take effect. So I'm going to do git add. I'm going to add a file uh, to do stuff with it. And if I start typing the start of a name, I don't want to type the whole name. I can just simply press the tab key, which is above the caps lock key, and it will also complete so long as it's clearly that's the only name it can have. So git add readme md return and it's added that for the staging I can see that in my status uh, readme is still modified uh, this is to be committed though I still need to commit it here it's just saying uh, the chain changed file has not yet been staged for commit now it's staged for commit you still have to commit it I'll do git commit and if I hit return right away I'm given a text editor on the command line. Yours might be different from mine. I'm using one called Vim. Uh, the first line will be like in the previous demo uh, short description. Capped letter. All subsequent lines are then the uh, more detailed description. Capitalize the first S of silly and then we can save it and quit and that does the commit git status again says we're on branch master we're ahead of uh, the origin master back on uh, the github site by one commit that's fine 
nothing to commit, working directory clean, all's fine. So my local version now has that updated uh, status with a capital S on that S silly. If I refresh here, nothing has changed. I only did the change on my local computer. To do to push that change up, I want to do git push origin master. It's going to ask me for my GitHub username and my password. You don't want anyone being able to push to your mod, so it asks you to authenticate. Oops. Trying to type too fast. Oh, right. <laughs> Second time, use the wrong username. I'm going to get this right, uh, I swear. It's uh, only a matter of time. There we go. Writing objects, total three, two, uh, that. And now if I reload, I have a capitalization. I've got my short description, cat letter, and I've got my longer description that I typed afterwards. And so at this point, what we can do is um, have a look at the log uh, for the changes on the repository. So if I simply do git log, it will show me what the uh, changes were. I can see there was the initial commit, which is when I created the repository. I can see there's the updated description uh, when I did it in the GitHub interface, and this change that I did just now in a text editor. So, I think at this point, that is uh, the GitHub and Git part mostly out of the way. Onwards, to mind test modding. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to put in a comment. Uh, GitHub, uh, um, sorry, mind test modding is done in Lua, and in Lua programming language, uh, doing a double dash uh, is a code comment, which means that uh, it's not actually code that will be executed, it's for the human writer to keep tabs and notes on what they're doing. This is my silly mod. I'm going to save that in silly mod at the same level as the readme and the license, and I'm going to call it specifically init.lua, init.lua initialization file. Any mod that is uh, loaded, uh, mind test will look for its init.lua as the starting point. So, what am I going to do for this uh, silly mod? Uh, I am going to create a custom node. I'm going to do mind test dot register node and mind test dot register node is a uh, function called to what's called the mind test API, the application programming interface. It's uh, an API, uh, as it sounds, is uh, it's some way of interacting with the application such that you are allowed to program it. The application says, hey, I know how to do these things. If you tell me to do these things in this specific way, then I'll do it. So what we're look, going to look for is the API documentation. I can close these. The API documentation from MindTest is at dev.mindtest.net. Uh, the page that I frequently come back to again and again is this methods page. So you can bookmark that uh, for future reference. There's a lot of methods that we can methods functions uh, as they would otherwise be called in, in by some people methods is another way of um, calling a function in a certain context uh, and all these methods uh, allow you to do things we've got uh, a mind test register on item eats with that we can register 
an item that we define and we say hey when the player eats this item do this thing um, area deletions um, when a node is placed, any node, when any node is placed, run uh, whatever we registered there. Uh, anytime a new player joins who has not joined before, do something special. All these various things. What I'm going to be looking for is uh, register nodes. So I'm going to do control F to find register underscore. Oh. Register APM node. I must have typed it. Oh right, it's just being listed without the underscore, so register space node. Okay. Well, you get the idea. It's here. It's the mind test register node method. Got a little summary here. A very quick um, description of how to use it. And in this node definition area, we're going to be able to specify a whole load of different parameters. Uh, for now, we'll only need a couple of things. So, let's get started. I'm going to come back to my text file. I'm going to register node. First thing I'm going to do, uh, my mod, I'm going to call it, well, it is called silly mod cool and then I'm going to type a colon and I'm going to type the name of the node silly block I'm going to call it you mustn't have any spaces any special characters uh, the only things you can have are letters uh, keep them lowercase not uppercase that's pointless you can have underscores and you can have numbers that's all you can have I'm going to call mine silly block, which is part of the silly mod. I'm going to do an open curly brace, and down here I'm just going to close the curly brace immediately so I don't forget to do it. And I'm going to come onto a new line, and I'm going to type a tab. Now I mentioned earlier on in choosing the text editor um, uh, code highlighting. Uh, the colors here are not simply decorative colors. They're actually very meaningful. They allow you to see what's happening. I can see that in this red color, your colors will vary. In this red color, I've got this uh, as a um, as a comment. I've got some uh, code here that is just normal code. And then here I've got some quoted text. You can see a double quote starts the quoted text. Suddenly the text changed to orange, and this is my quoted text. Close it with the double quotes, and then it goes back to normal color. So if something happens, say I forget to close the quotes, I'm going to see something like this. The color is going to be different, it's going to be off, and I'll be able to immediately see, ah, something's wrong here. Oh, I need to fix that. Come out of there and we're fine. Most of the times parentheses, curly braces, square brackets all need to be closed. This square bracket doesn't have a closing squ other square bracket so it's red. In your program it might be different. Um, but if I come to these other ones they have closing corresponding ones and they are highlighted. Again a way to see whether you've done something basically wrong. Indentation uh, I have a tab here, allows me to see clearer. In Lua, uh, these curly braces define a table. A uh, table is another way of saying an array, a list. Uh, in Lua, it's fairly flexible as uh, interchangeable names. I can do one, two, three, and so on and so forth. You define them with uh, double quotes for the values. You can have them as key values, so uh, I could have something instead like 1 equals 1. That's a label referencing a numerical value. A could be, or even alpha, just to be fancy, uh, delta. 
things like that. So what we're doing here is we're passing one of these tables in. We're going to be defining a few things. One is going to be the texture. Nope. Tiles. Pardon me. Equals, and that itself is going to be a table. I'm just going to uh, use a texture that we haven't yet created. I'm going to call it silly mod, same as the mod, underscore silly block. And I expect to make it as a PNG file. We'll come back to that in a sec. The second thing we're going to do is groups equals. Um, let's give it choppy equals three. Groups are documented uh, in the mind test dev wiki, and you can read up more about them. If you come back to the wiki, you ask about groups. and you can find out all there is to know basically about groups. The quick and easy way of thinking about them is you've got uh, just a few oddly breakable by hand which allows you to break things by hand. Three would be the easiest, one would be harder zero is you can't break it by hand and that's the same as just not defining it here at all. You've got cracky, anything that would tend to crack be really hard so stone, cobblestone, desert stone and you need a pickaxe for, furnaces, crumbly, things like dirt, like sand uh, that you would uh, use a shovel on, choppy things that you can chop that are made of generally of wood, so that's tree trunks, planks, uh, things like that, and snappy, think twigs, think grass, uh, and you would uh, destroy those with sword. Again, up for all of these, three being easier, one being harder, and not defining them, meaning that that tool will have no effect. I'm going to give this silly block a choppy of three and I'm going to save this. And this, in principle, should work. So, let's open mind test. And I'm going to create a new mod, uh, or new world rather, and silly mod test two, because I already have test one in there. And I'm going to configure it and I should have my silly mod in here from the start. Uh, yeah, there we go, silly mod. I'm going to enable it, save, play. I'm going to give myself silly mod colon silly block. And there you have it. It doesn't have any texture yet, so mind test has just made a random texture which is just a block of color. And as you can see, can't break it by hand. But if I give myself uh I said choppy, so a steel axe. I can can't by hand, but very easy to do it with an axe. And you can see I've got a lot of error messages here. Could not load image silly mod silly block PNG uh, simply because I haven't yet defined it. So close that. And the next thing we're going to do is make that texture. Um, for making textures, you can use pretty much any uh, graphical editing. Um, software you want. Um, if you don't want to get out of pocket with uh, something like uh, Photoshop, you can use the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Yes, it has a very unfortunate name, uh, but it does uh, pretty well for our purposes. 
download it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm going to bring mine here. And what are we going to do? File new. Um, generally, you want to do 8 pixel by 8 pixel or 16 pixel by 16 pixel graphics to keep in line with the uh, sort of pixely, blocky nature of the game. You could do 32 by 32, 64 by 64, or anything. So long as really you keep it square, it should make sense, and you might want to do it as a power of 2, hence the 8, 16, 32, 64. If you want a power of 2, you could simply do I don't know, 2 to the power of, I don't know, 10 equals uh, 1024. Uh, it so happens that 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 16 being, so yeah, 16 is a power of 2. Um, generally keep things to powers of 2 so that when the game tries to recalculate the size of the image, uh, either from small to big or big to smaller, uh, it doesn't end up with uh, doing some weird math making the picture look too ugly. I'm going to stick with 16 by 16. And here we have it, a 16 by 16 image. If I hold control on Linux, it should be the same on Windows. I think with Mac you may need to hold command, or maybe control, give it a try. And you use your mouse wheel, you can scroll in, and there we go. Now we're uh, editing directly. I am going to use the pencil and I'm going to give myself a size of 1 of course and I should, yeah there we go, 1. I've got black I'm going to choose oop, two screens uh, uh, that shade of yellow, I like that shade of yellow, okay um, actually no, I'm going to bucket fill that I'm going to use uh, some orange uh, pencil and let's draw a few things there uh, I am a really 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 rubbish pixel artist uh, to say that I were a pixel artist at all is an insult to anyone in the arts profession my apologies to you um, yeah a very, very basic shape. This is horrendous. But you get the idea. If you're a better pixel artist than I, by all means, please, please have a go. Because, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please forgive me. So, that's done. Uh, I want to export save would save uh, it as a GIMP project. Uh, I want to actually save this as uh, as an image. I want to save it as PNG. Uh, PNG because it is fairly small but it is also lossless. JPEG will actually try to do some weird interpolations. It'll make it fairly ugly. Uh, so let's just keep it PNG. I go to my mods I go to my silly mod, which should be at the top, and here I've got that .git folder, which is the hidden folder, and normally there's the readme and the license file, but they're not PNGs, so they're not showing up. All textures need to reside in a folder called textures, simply. I'm in my textures, and I called it silly mod silly block export. I'll accept the defaults and for now I'm going to close that. Okay, so now I can come back to my mind test. I can, at this point, uh, the texture is in the right place. It has the right name, sillymod underscore sillyblock.png, just as we had specified 
in the tile silly mod underscore silly block dot png. So after having done that, it should just work. Well, hey, look, here's uh, my silly block. Can't do anything with it. Uh, there's no sound when you walk on it. There's no sound when you hit it. Nothing. You can still chop it. Fine. Congratulations. Um, given that there's no sounds, maybe we should add some sounds. Let's add our own little custom sounds. I'm using a program called Audacity. Again, uh, it's a free open source program. Uh, you can get it for Mac, Windows, and Linux. At audacityteam.org. So I'm going to record uh, even into Audacity. Now I'm recording in the screen share, so um, I'm not sure if this is going to work because my microphone is taken by my screen recorder, but let's give it a try. Uh, actually, I'll just doom, 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 doom. Yeah, that's the monitor, and Audacity is actually receiving the sound. So let's do that. Record. Okay, nothing, nothing particularly fancy. Um, no, it's not playing back. Uh, where's my playback? Oh, right, okay. Ah, right. Okay, so I don't particularly want the rest of that. Shift K to select to from whatever position you'd selected to the end. Delete. I'm going to put the cursor there and Shift J to select to the beginning and delete that. I'm going to press space. Okay. Um, I'm going to select just this space here so that's just a bit of noise I'm gonna do noise reduction and I'm gonna get the noise profile I'm gonna unselect and I'm gonna go back to noise reduction again and using the noise profile I'm going to apply it to the entire sound see the whole thing has been uh, selected uh, I'm gonna have to increase this okay and now if I press J to go back to the uh, sound sample we have we don't have the noise in the background so that's the sound here we're going to export uh, audio again or export again rather uh, I want to go to my mind test where's here it is mods silly mods um, Yes, and this time I need to create a sounds folder. Uh, silly mod step dot, and this time we need to uh, save as an og vorbis file. It's an open source, open specification, rather um, sound file, quite like uh, MP3s, uh, but open specification. No implementer has to pay some patent or license fee just to be able to play MP3s. Yes, that's a thing. Um, so save. That's the org file saved. Uh, whoops. It'll give you a dialog. Just accept the defaults. That's the org file saved now. I can close this project. Oh. And I forget. Um, how to add sounds. So I'm going to find in the page sounds. There we go. Footstep uh, and dig. And I'm going to use footstep. Footstep, dig, and dog. Ah. Um, so if I bring my code here, I can reference my documentation at the same time. Uh, this table is a table of properties and values, property value, and every time you have a comma at the end, you 
can leave a comment at the end of the last one. Uh, it's generally recommended so that when you're moving stuff around, you don't get odd errors because there are commas missing. I'm going to do sounds. This is also specified in another table. Add my comma. And here I'm going to do footstep equals. And in this instance, we don't specify the uh, uh, file extension of the sound. I'll just do silly mod, silly block. Is that what I called it? Uh, silly mod sounds silly step. There you go. Silly step. Save. And there again, everything is in place. We've got a sounds folder with an appropriately named sound. We're referencing the sound uh, by its proper name. So I should be able to use this. Give me. I don't know, 10 more of them. Let's put a good bunch of them. These unhappy souls. Ah, uh, nope. It looks like I didn't register that properly. It's not doing anything, not working. Okay, uh, what did I do? A table of sounds, a simple sound spec. Footstep, not step. Foot, step. Yeah, no, I did that. Sounds equals. Um, silly mod step og. Silly mod step. That's likely the culprit. Try that again. There we go. Anytime I walk in that, that sound plays. Fun! Right, well, I'm happy with that. That's my silly mod done. So now I come back to Git. I can do a Git status. And it's telling me that there's a whole bunch of things that's not been tracked. So I'm going to Git add in there and then just tab for in it dot doer. I'm going to add my sounds and I'm going to add my textures. All stage to be added. Git status shows me that it's all about to be added. And then I do a git commit and I'm going to just do a, a short message. So I'm just going to do dash m open some quote marks and write between them um, with textures and sounds. And there we have it. That's uh, been immediately added. I don't have to do any additional commenting or whatnot. That uh, added section on the comment on under, under the commit will be empty. All I need to do now is git push origin master and it pushes all my stuff up. So now if I come back to my repository reload hey presto here is everything. Latest commit is this one if I click on the number, I can see that I added an init during that commit, I added a sound, and I added a picture. Finally, let's say mm, I want to do some development on my mod, and I want to leave uh, that version there uh, as it is whilst I'm working, but I also want to push stuff up to my repository so that it stays there, it's available for other people to copy out and work on with me if I want. What I need to do then is to branch. Um, there are various strategies uh, as to how to do this. Uh, for an entry level, what I'd suggest is just doing a development branch. If I do git 
branch dash dash list I can see that I only have one branch it's master I want to create uh, a new branch for development so I'm going to git branch development and that will create a development branch so if I do my up arrow I go back two commands I can see that there's a development branch but currently I'm on the master branch. I want to go to the development branch. I do git check out development. Type it properly. And now I'm on my development branch. And for now, um, it's all exactly the same. So if I come back to my init Lua, I can do need to do make him smile use frowny face when being chops I don't even know if that's possible no I don't think that's possible let's just make him smile use different sound when being shot. There we go. That I can do now, I think. Uh, register node, sounds, dig, whilst it is being dug. Yes, okay, that's fine. Um, let's actually do that. No. So, um, coming back to here, I do git status. I've modified my init Lua, so I'm going to git add init.lua um, some dev notes. Oops. Git add init Lua. Git commit m some dev notes. Okay, so I've committed some dev notes. Now, previously we were doing git push origin origin master we don't want to be doing that this time we want to be pushing to the na our branch name so I can do git status and it tells me I'm on branch development so what I can do git push origin development we're telling git to push to our origin which is github and we're telling it to push on that origin to the branch called development. That branch doesn't exist currently on GitHub, it only exists on this laptop. But if I do it nonetheless, it pushes and it creates a new branch development. And you can see here it's already uh, updated in the GitHub interface, uh, a new branch called development. Uh, this hasn't kept pace, so I'll just reload. And branch now, there's a development branch. I'm currently on master here. I go to development, and I can see my new commit, some dev notes. And it has the dev notes there. But if I go to the master branch, it's still the version from before I put in my dev notes. And that's ni the nice advantage also of using Git and GitHub, is that if you tell someone, hey, go download silly mod, they say, okay, I'm going to go and download the zip of silly mod. What they will get first and foremost is the master version, not some other branch, not something that's in development that might be broken, that might have bugs in it completely. No get the master branch. Similarly here, um, I can use a command called cat on in Linux and I can cat my init Lua and that will just dump the contents of init Lua to my terminal. And I can see cat init Lua, this is the contents of it, all that, that's fine. If I do git check out master switch to branch master 
and I can just cat my init loo again and it doesn't have the dev nodes. Come back to my development branch. Hey, dev nodes are back. And so you can switch between your development environment and your master just like that. So let's um, do that sound. Oops, that sound change I was talking about. Uh, I'm going to record a new sound. He's going to, I don't know, he's going to wail when, 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 we, when we try to chop him. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, that's noise. I'm going to do noise reduction, get the noise profile, deselect noise reduction, apply, and now we shouldn't hear the background hissing. There we go. So I can now trim that. Ooh, I don't like that. Control Z. Okay, I'll just take that much off. There we go. And I'll export audio. And this is going to be now silly mod whale dot org. Okay. Okay. No. And so now reload. That happened because when um if you didn't see it, uh, Genie was telling me, oh, this file has changed on disk, do you want to reload? And I said, yes, uh, it was changed on disk because when I was switching between uh, the branches, it was actually rewriting the files on the disk to be uh, the various uh, save states that we were switching between. So this sound, um, I think it's dig. Uh, yeah, there we go, dig. Or shall it be Doug? Doug equals silly mod. Um, silly mod. What was it? Whale. There we go. Uh, and I can test that. And now let's dig these guys. And there we go, a new sound. Hey! So now we're ready. Uh, git status. Uh, I changed the init lua and I added the whale. So git add. I'm just going to add everything that I've done. So git add dot. Ah, there we go. Git status. Look, it's added everything to the staging. So we can just commit m whale on dig. Okay. Git push origin development. And there we go. Development done. Um, if I come back to GitHub, reload. We're on master. This master still is the one without the development notes and all that. If we go to the development branch, we now have whale on dig, we've got the the, the digging uh, item and whale on dig is actually right next to the whaling sound as well. Let's say I'm happy with uh, with that development. I can do git checkout master and I'm back to my master branch and I can choose to merge my development changes into my master so git merge development and there it's telling me okay well 
fine. We'll fast forward. We've got init is uh, updated, and we've got uh, the certain file added. So if I do git status, I'm now on my master branch, but you can see that my init Lua is now the version with the dev notes and with the whale sound. So now I do git push origin master. and that's pushed. If I come back to my master branch. On my master branch I now have the whale on dig version. It says I committed that two minutes ago, which I did. I only pushed it to master a few seconds ago, but I committed it two minutes ago. And now if someone downloads uh, the mod from GitHub it will actually um, give them the version with the whaling sound. And so, congratulations, we've made a new release. You might want to put a version num number on it. Version numbers, to be honest, are arbitrary. Um, they're just for your abil ability to track which version it is, but you don't need to. Uh, and yeah, so you can continue doing your development uh, and branch development, keep on making changes on the development branch, and only push to your master branch as and when a fully completed version uh, is ready. And that should cover the basics of making your first mod. Uh, there's plenty more to look into on Git, uh, adding repositories, managing your branches, rebranching, merging, all that goodness. Uh, there's lots of stuff you can do uh, in mind test to blocks, to entities, which are the things that move that aren't actually blocks. You can get the lines of sights of things, you can write to the log, you can uh, define new craft recipes, so combining items, you can register your own items, you can register tools, uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff you can do. You can pretty much control nearly every facet uh, of gameplay. For a fuller um, introduction to mind test modding, uh, than this, you can check out Ruben Wardy's uh, resource. Uh, it's a little behind the 0414, so yeah, uh, this was being written for the 0413 series. Um, but it is pretty much mostly uh, nigh up to date. Uh, it goes over the, folder the general folder structure of a mind test mod folder, uh, which is here. Uh, creating nodes, creating items, uh, and a lot of more advanced items as well. So happy coding! Uh, as you can see, uh, to create a mod for mind test, uh, you really need very little. Uh, you just need the game, a folder, and a couple of things. Um, I was uh, showing uh, with GitHub so that you could share those changes. If you don't want to use GitHub, you just want to do your init Lua, you don't want to source code manage, that's absolutely fine. Just afterwards you come out, you find your mod folder, you right click it, uh, Windows you want to have a create compressed folder, Mac it's an archive, uh, on uh, Ubuntu it's simply compress, and you'll be asked what you want to call it. You want to call it actually .zip, and uh, not none of the others. Uh, on Linux, you might be offered like things like tarGZ, which is fairly common. Uh, but if you're distributing it to uh, anyone else, uh, just use the .zip format. Cinemod .zip into zips, and you now have that .zip. And you can upload that to the mind test forum. Go to forum. You want to go to the mods part. You want to go to the work in progress mods. Even though you finished it, it's all 
uh, polished and complete, you still need to create a new topic in the work in progress mods. Get some comment, get some feedback, there might be things that need, need tweaking. And then once you've done that, you can go to the regular mods page, uh, go to the releases, and request to move your mod topic to the mod releases. So, as I say before then, go first to the work in progress mods, create a mod uh, posting, call it either mod or mod pack, and then the name of the act, the programmatic name of the mod, and that way you'll be able to show the world your new awesome mod. Have fun!